everybody, CT Hippo and Corvette on another adventure. Today we are somewhere between Arlington and some place I can't remember the name of. Somewhere between Oso and Darrington. Yes, Darrington, that's the one. Uh, and today we are exploring the remains of an old sawmill. This is the, what's colloquially known as the Fortson Mill. Um, the history of this area, or at least for this story, begins in 1901 when the Northern Pacific Railway built a branch line from Arlington to Darrington. Um, that, really, that grade is now the White Horse Trail. And uh, it actually runs right behind here. You'll see a little bit later in the video. In 1905, the McCarthy brothers built a sawmill here on their land. And uh, it grew. Um, by 1910, there were 300 people living here. And eventually they sold out to the Fortson Company in 1914, which you know would have been peak World War I, so would have been very busy. Uh, that only lasted for about three years. In 1917, the mill burned down, and the site sat vacant until 1926? Yes. 1926, when it was taken over by another sawmill company, and restarted. However, the name Fortson stuck, and that was also used as the name of the town, even though the Fortson Mill Company itself only lasted three years. Eventually, in 1934, the road washed 32. out. 32. The road washed out, and uh, the mill was abandoned. A lot of the machinery from here was hauled into Darrington and used to build the sawmill there, which is now the Hampton Lumber Company mill. Don't know if the any of the original machinery is still in use, but sawmill machinery is pretty basic. It doesn't change much in the last hundred and change years, so it's entirely possible. In any case, there's our first look at it. Still trying to figure out what's what. But uh, yeah, this is the mill, and let's go explore it. Big holly tree there. I had to guess, I would say this is probably the foundations for the planer. Uh, typically in sawmills, it's a two-step operation. They uh, rough cut the boards in the sawmill and then kiln dry them and then run them through the planer after they're dry to cut them to the final dimension. Planers are extremely large machines, and as you would imagine, the process generates a god-awful amount of sawdust. So I suspect the planers were up there, and sawdust fell down here and was hauled out on conveyors to probably a sawdust burner, which was common before uh, they started using it for the strap sauce for paper manufacturing. Ah, 
pipes coming out here. The other possibility, of course, is this was a boiler house, but I wouldn't expect, wouldn't expect uh, it to be this tall if it was just boilers. There wasn't a need to get underneath the machinery for some reason. I always find it entertaining when you have trees growing inside the of lumber mills. A little bit of a revenge of the wild there.
this here is probably the foundation of the debarking building. Typically, logs would be skidded in either by oxen or by mechanical uh, mules, or uh, excuse me, mechanical donkeys, steam donkeys, and uh, thrown in the pond here. And the idea for that was it would preserve them because apparently floating in the water is less bad on logs than the alternatives. And then they would fish them out here and debark them before they go into the mill. Judging by the amount of uh, fishing detritus, there's fish in these waters. Or at least people think there are. Remember the important part. If I die, get it on YouTube. You're not pointing it in my direction. I mean, there's nothing really over here. So in case you didn't know it, Corvette is my uh, staff historian and it has a fourth degree black belt in Google Foo. She can find fucking anything on the internet, including every kind of porn known to man. Yeah. I, I was looking for how could I deny that, but... <laughs> Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. <laughs> Promise you an adventure? <laughs> you did. This is how he got me, too, folks. Lured me out into the woods. No, I'd, I'd like to talk to it without it looking at me. Thank you. You're a douche. And yet you're still with me. What the fuck's up with that? Yeah, well, you promised me an adventure. Are you not entertained? <laughs> I'm about to 300 you into that pond. Anyway. Anyway. Um, I guess those are different movies. I can find shit on the internet. I don't watch movies. Pop culture is not necessarily my thing. Yeah, mine either. Um, yeah, so he promised me an adventure and lured me out into another, very near to here, remnants of so Mill down. ghost towns. In, Keep in mind, this was our first date. In Arlington. It was our first date. And he's like, you know, come meet me in the middle of nowhere off of a barely used road. It was a Denny's parking lot right off I-5. Okay, yes. Meet me in the Denny's parking lot. Get into my car. I'm going to drive you into the woods. Yes, that, that part is correct. Yes. I'm a light down there. There's a light down there? There's a light down there. There is a light down there. Down where I was seeing those other structures. There's a light over at the Frankenstein place. Okay, people of YouTube, There's please like light. and subscribe so no more of that has to happen. He needs to not quit his day job. So yes, I took her out in the woods on our first date, did murder her, and she hasn't left since. Fact. surprised everybody that he wasn't a murderer, but... I'm not sure how to feel about that. Well, I mean, it's nothing against you personally. It's just the the whole setup of go out in the middle of nowhere with somebody. I think a lot of people thought we just didn't know each other, but I'd essentially been his... Uh, sort of my boss. Sort of boss. Except not really. Yeah. But sort of. Yes. So I was the volunteer coordinator at the place, and he was a volunteer at the place. And I was the safety officer. And the laundry bitch. And the laundry bitch, yes. Most of the laundry bitch. <laughs> let's, let's be honest here. Yes. But, uh, so I'd known him, at least in passing, for quite a while. I mean, you'd seen me naked by that point. I had already seen you naked. 
I mean, not many people get to say that they get to uh, see all of the goods and sometimes see the goods at work before they uh, before invest. They <laughs> So I wore brand new pretty panties for this adventure. They are down around my fucking knees right now. They are satin lace. And this is a lot of walking to expect something that slinky to stay up. I wore perfectly practical cotton briefs like I do every day. <laughs> and good shoes. See that? I wore good shoes. Uh-huh. That made no ignore me. Well, you have two and a half cents? <laughs> yes. What do you think? Part of the mill or like a rail station building? Well, or it might be a uh, telegram or signal box. I mean, my initial thought was pump house. So. I think I'm thinking signal box, it's concrete coated steel. With a domed roof and doors. For signal box. Somebody was living in it at one point. So I know this looks like me going ever deeper into the woods in search of greater adventures and there's an element of that to it but really it's just me from past day climbing over that goddamn tree again so just so you know the truth some sort of a large building back there. Mm -hmm. I found a fairly clear view of it, but you can't see that far without eyeballs to see if it's, you know, somebody's actual current house. Or... See, I got the plus side from this relationship of the adventures. He's just gaining weight. I mean, the plus to that is it means he's being fed something that didn't come out of a microwave. Sometimes, I mean, I can't be there all the time. Which is probably best for your waistline. See, kind of part of the pond. Ish. Ish. <laughs> 